Coast live oak is one of the iconic oak species in California. It is an evergreen oak and can grow to enormous size. Since the mid-1990s, sudden oak death has killed hundreds of thousands of coast live oaks and other oaks along the mid-coastal regions of California. This disease is caused by a microscopic organism called Phytophthora remorum. Although the sudden death of the top of the tree is what gets people's attention, Phytophthora remorum kills trees by attacking the trunk. In many coast live oaks, the first visible symptom of infection is bleeding through the bark surface. The liquid that oozes from the bark is generally thick and dark reddish brown to black. In some trees, bleeding is extensive. The appearance can change over time as the ooze dries up and is washed away by rain, often leaving dark stains on the bark. By examining the same trees over many years, we have learned that there are various possible outcomes when Phytophthora remorum infects coast live oaks. Let's look at an example. We began observing this tree in 2000. In 2006, we noticed bleeding on the trunk of this tree for the first time. Let's look closely at the area in the red circle. When we chip away the outer bark near the bleeding, you can see the canker formed by the pathogen in the phloem of the tree. The canker is the area killed by the pathogen and is visible on the outside but in the area between the arrows. Let's follow what happens to this tree over time, starting when we first notice the canker. The canker continued to expand, and as is typical among trees with sudden oak death, the older part of the canker was attacked by the sap-rotting fungus Annulohypoxylon thorsianum and several different species of ambrosia beetles. Three years after infection, the entire trunk is girdled by cankers and the canopy is dead. By five years after initial infection, this dead tree is still standing but now, let's take a look at what has been happening to the top of the tree during this time. A year after initial symptoms, the canopy of this tree still looks pretty good. But by year two, the canopy is looking a little thinner. The tree has already been dead for a year at the time this picture was taken. The tree in the background is also dead. We're going to take a closer look at that tree in just a minute. Two years after tree death, some of the dead branches in the canopy of this tree have broken. Three years after tree death, many more branches have failed. But while the tree we've been watching has been slowly falling apart, the neighboring tree has experienced a trunk failure. Let's take a closer look at the reaction of that tree to infection by Phytophthora remorum. Like the neighboring tree, bleeding was first seen on this tree in 2006. Chipping off the dead outer bark revealed the canker in the living bark or phloem tissue. This tree died in four years. By now, a year after death, smaller branches in the canopy are beginning to break or fail. Two years after tree death, the trunk has failed completely. This is a common occurrence among smaller trees killed by sudden oak death. Here is a different pattern of symptom expression. We inspected this tree every year since September 2000. Symptoms first appeared on this tree in 2007 and were quite advanced at that time as ambrosia beetles had already colonized the cankered area of the tree. Here is the other side of the tree. 
You can see the cankers girdle the whole trunk. This tree was probably infected during the rainy years of 2005 and 2006. Chipping the dead outer bark away reveals the extensive canker in the phloem. A year later, this large tree was dead, a classic example of sudden oak death. As is typical of trees that die suddenly, the dead leaves fall off over the next year or two. Within two years of death, many of the fine branches and some of the larger branches had failed. This pattern of falling apart from the top down is common in large trees with little pre-existing trunk decay.